God bless each and every one of you. We welcome you to the TV program tonight. This is the Word of Power Gospel Hour. My name is Reverend Ronald Davis. I've been a minister in this city for a while. I've pastored a couple churches and evangelized. And I just love the Lord today. Do you love Jesus today? Amen. Amen. You need to love him because you know why the Bible says he loved you before you ever loved him and knew him. Do you know God loves you so much he'll come looking for you? Amen. Do you know that Abraham, the father of our faith, he wasn't looking for God. God went looking for him and found him. He 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 was a child. He lived in Chaldea, and and he 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 worshipped idols. He served idols and everything. God found this man, and he walked with God. He got to know God, and he and he started walking with him. And God used him mightily. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Jesus loves you today, and I want you to know that. My God, I'm telling you what, I could have served back 400 years in prison if the Lord hadn't intervened and got me out of some big time trouble. I've, I've given my testimony on here many times. When I was born, I should have died. I should have died three times, three or four times in my life, but God intervened. Why? Because he had a purpose and a plan for my life. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I won't go deep into my testimony because it's none of your business. Amen. But I know what God did for me. And I thank him today. I could be sitting behind bars right now instead of going into them and preaching to the prisoners. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Oh, God can do that for you in your life too today. Oh, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying today. This preacher ain't been a preacher in the past. Hey, I'm telling you, I was a pretty bad, pretty bad character. Amen. Just about did it all. Hallelujah. You know what? I love the Lord today. And I have a very powerful message today. The Lord gave it to me, and as a matter of fact, my wife, as I was reading this message to her, and we was going over it, I was talking about the wolves devouring the sheep, and when I said, about the time I said that, the wolf popped up on her screen on her computer. Now, how much more confirmation could you get that God gave me confirmation this is his message from him, and it's a right now, right time the right time and a right now message for right now, for today. Now faith is. Let your faith operate today. Open your heart. Shall we pray? Father, I pray you would open every heart out there today. And every person that needs to listen and hear this broadcast today, to hear your word, Father, let them tune in and turn on into this channel right now. Give them ears to hear. Father, like in Revelation, you said to every church, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Father, open their hearts to receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save the soul. Father, let, let them hear with their spiritual ears today. And open the eyes of their understanding that they can listen and understand and know what's been spoken today. But not only that, to do as James 1.18 says, to be doers of the word, not just to see. And Father, let your anointed word go forth and do what it needs to do. Father, bless people. Save them. Deliver them. Heal them. Whatever the needs are today, Father God. I pray that people that's backslidden get back on track today, Father God. Those that's lukewarm and cold, I pray you light their fire. The Holy Ghost would light their fire again. Jesus said he baptized us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Light their fire again, Father. Many people in the church, their fires have gone out. Oh, Father, touch today, and we thank you for it. In the name of the mighty, mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Ooh, I feel the anointing of the Lord right now. I feel His holy presence. You feel His holy presence? God's omnipotent. He's everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. But you sure can tangibly feel His holy presence. You can feel His anointing. Amen. Amen. That's the power of God manifest. Hey, hallelujah. Name of my message today. I've got a very powerful message. Like I said, me and my wife was going over this message and I was talking and and I was talking about how the wolf, this, the devil, devours the sheep. And that's God's people. About the time I said that, a wolf popped up on her screen on her computer. Now how much more? confirmation can you get the bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established this is the word of the lord can i hear an amen? amen open your heart and listen today there's many people you know in the last days the, the bible says in timothy that there'll be lovers of pleasure and, and lovers of everything else except the lord can i hear an amen? amen 
Amen, amen. I pastor churches, and I know what I'm talking about. People, they always, they come up with every kind of excuse they can not to come to church. And then when they do come to church, after the enemy's got to the point where he just about devoured them, they're so broken down, then you got to work with them and pray for them and counsel them and, and, and keep praying for them and, and fast for them and everything else to build them back up. Amen? You lose out and miss out when you don't attend your local church. And I'm here to tell you today. I'm telling you, it has its benefits. And when you don't attend, it hurts. And the name of this message today is not attending church hurts. I've had many people tell me, well, why do I got to go to church? I can watch it on TV. What if that man's not preaching the truth and you don't know the Bible? You don't know the truth. Most of you never crack a Bible. You never pick it up and open it up to read it. You always depend on the preacher. Amen? Preacher can come filled up and, and everybody empties him out and drains him. Amen? The Bible says study. In, in Timothy, it says to study for yourself. Amen? To show, show yourself approved unto God. Amen? We need to open the Bible and read it because when you do, you'll grow spiritually. Amen. The Bible is like looking into a mirror. The Word is like look. The Bible says in the Book of James, is like looking into a mirror. You'll see yourself. Can I hear you? Amen. Mm -hmm. You'll know how you are, and you'll know how you're how you're not. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, "Study to show yourself approved unto God." You want to know how you proved unto God? Study. Amen. Study the Word of God. Because when you study the Word of God, you begin to know God. And you begin to know what God likes and what He dislikes. Amen. You stop sinning so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, we're all sinners saved by grace and mercy of God. But once you're saved, honey, you you got to bear fruit in your life. And the fruit are holy fruits. Can I hear an amen? The name of this message is Not Attending Church Hurts. Hebrews 10.25, if you have a Bible, write your scriptures down and go back over them, if you will. I kind of have to rush along. Uh, wish we had an R to preach on here. I could really get into some real good messages, but thank God for the time he allows us, amen, that we can get this gospel out. Touching, I pray it's touching the lives of many people, not just this program, but every program that's preaching the truth, the pure, unadulterated word of God, amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 25. It says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more. Now I'm going to say this again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Now, there's a reason Paul is addressing and, put, and writing the, the Hebrew church. Because this is in the book of Hebrews. He's writing to the Hebrew church and the Hebrew people. And he's telling them to, 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 to attend. Don't forsake it. Gather yourself together. And there's lots of reason why we need to gather together. Amen. And I'm going to tell you why. And we're going to get into it. Amen. See, when you miss, it hurts. You hurt yourself and you hurt others. Amen. We're going to get into it and I'm going to show you. It says... As the manner of some is. So when Paul's saying this, he's addressing this church. He said, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. So he's addressing them back in that day. There were people missing church back then. Come on, the same way today. People don't change unless God changes us. Time changes. Generations changes. But people don't change. They ain't got no new tricks. <laughs> Amen. He got no, no new tricks up his sleeve. He ain't got no more aces up his sleeve. He done used them all. Amen. Hallelujah. And God's going to trump him out. And he's going to have to play his cards pretty soon. Amen. But you better be walking with God in these last days because it says in Revelation 12, 11, there was a war in heaven and Michael cast Satan down unto the earth. And it says, woe unto you, the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down unto you and he's full of rage. And see, Jesus Christ is greater if he's in you. Greater is he that is in you than him that is in the world. But you've got to have him in you and walking with him. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's lots of reason. And it goes on. It's, and this is the reason why. 
Because Paul said down here in the last part of Scripture, but exhorting one another. We need to exhort and encourage and pray for one another. Amen? Hallelujah. And then he went on to say, and so much the more. So there's more. There's so much the more reasons why we need to be in church. And I'm going to go into this. I, I, I'm really tired of people saying, well, I don't need to go to church. Well, I can send them a few dollars. I can send them my tithes. They need you. We miss you. We're the family of God now. God has redeemed us and brought us out, out of the world. The Bible says that to love the world is being the enemy of God now. You're not to look like the world and act like the world anymore. You're supposed to look like and act like Jesus. Because that's the job of the Holy Spirit to transform you and, 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 and to change you. That's his job. The work of regeneration. That's what he was sent back for. What, what's the work of regeneration, preacher? That is changing you back into the image and the likeness of Almighty God again. That's the Holy Spirit's job. You see, we lost his identity in the fall when man sinned. We're all sinners now because Adam and Eve sinned. And sin and death were passing to the whole world because of their sins. They were the first two born. Or Adam, God created. Eve, God created. All was born after them. Do you realize Adam and Eve, uh, and Eve never had a childhood? They was adults, so they born. <laughs> Their seed, then the babies came through the seed. Amen? So I'll throw it in. Hallelujah. We need to take to attend church. Too many people tend to make excuses when it comes time to go to church. Come on. The devil will do everything he can. You get in the car, the kids start fighting. Come on. <laughs> or the devil will start a, a quarrel but, but with your spouse. Or maybe your spouse taking too long to get ready. They got to get all dolled up. You know you know how women are. <laughs> and there, then the husband gets all irritable. Amen. The devil will do everything in his power to stop you from going to church on a Sunday. You got to make it up in your mind. I am going to get up now. I'm going to go. I'm going to. There's going to be love in my home. There's going to be peace in my home. There's not going to be any turmoil, any quarreling, arguing. We just going to repent real quick, and we're going to get back in the will of God, and in the peace of God and the love of God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. You got to decide, and you got to know in your heart. You need the church. You need your family of God. That's your family now. You've been brought out of the world. I know you have a natural family, but when you b become born again, you're born into the family of God. Uh, and all these people, supposed to be new creatures and creations, be like Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And the ones that are not, God's working on all of us and changing us. Amen. He, we're being changed, the Bible says, from image to image and glory to glory. They all make excuses when it comes time to go to church. The devil does everything he can to stop you and to keep you out. Why? Well, like I said, when you're when you're you're uh, uh, just a church goer, a tender, a Christian, you're 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 classified as a sheep. And uh, and when a sheep goes astray from the shepherd who flocks watches over the flock and the sheep, then the wolves can attack the lambs. The lamb has no way to fight. I'm going to tell you something. You can when you're a Christian with spiritual warfare, but you still need others staying with you. But you see, the wolf, which is a symbolized of the devil, his demons and Satan, can devour the sheep. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. And he wants to keep you out so you can't grow and mature and bear fruit too. Amen. And he don't want you blessed. He wants you to sin. He wants you to be weak in the spirit and strong in the flesh so your flesh can cause you to sin and try to take you to hell. Can I hear an amen? amen? But that's another reason we might need to be in church and attend church is to build up our spirit. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to read you a scripture here real quick. The Lord is just quickening it unto me. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. When the Lord gives you something, He gives it to you by the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
right before Revelations in the book of Jude. Jude, Jude is only one chapter. Verse 20. But ye, you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build your spirit up. When you feed yourself the Word of God, that's why you need to be in the church, to hear the pastor. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing cometh by the Word of God. You're building your spirit up. You're doing everything to, to that your flesh will decrease and that your spirit will increase. Can I hear an amen? John the Baptist said, I must decrease as he increases. You see, we need to decrease in ourself and let him increase in his self within us. And then all of a sudden, our spirit, our inner man will be, become stronger than our flesh. And then we'll have power over the flesh and sin. Can I hear an amen? Too many weak Christians walking around sinning all the time because they never build their spirit up. They never pray the spirit. They never read the word of God. They don't go to church, tend church. Can I hear an amen? I cannot harp on this enough that you do, you need the church. You need the church like Christ, you, that you need Christ. Jesus birthed the church in the earth. God, hear an amen. He is the body now. We are the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to keep harping on it until people get in church. You need to build your spirit up by staying in the Word of God, fellowshipping with Christians, being evenly yoked, being around Christians. That's another reason being in the church. You're around the world all the time. They have their holds on you. You're around unchrist like people all the time. You're around sinners, and you need to be fellowship with other Christians, and you need your sisters and brothers in the body of Christ to be evenly yoked. Can I hear an amen? amen? Like the old saying says, birds of a feather flock together. Amen? And don't think you can't backslide. Let me give you a scripture here in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. See, Paul's saying here that you can turn around and go the other way again. You can backslide. That's what he's saying here. And a lot of Christians have backslid because they quit going to church. and not fellowship with Christians. They're not hanging around Christians anymore. They're not having fellowship with Christians. You see, you need to be at least evenly yoked. Evenly yoked. I'm not saying you've got to be around more Christians, but at least be evenly yoked. Can I hear an amen? Because you may be around somebody that's a bank robber. You may be around somebody that's a thief. And then all of a sudden, you keep hanging around that person, and all of a sudden, you might pick up their habits. Can I hear an amen? Right. We need to be around good people, moral people, Christian people. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to be around sinners, too, that you can witness to them. That's the reason you need to be around them. Tell them about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you have a Bible, go with me to Luke chapter 14. i got to kind of hurry along here. Luke chapter 14, and I'll give you a rundown on, on what this story's about. The man made a great supper, and he sent his children, he sent a servant in to go out and invite some people to come in, into his house. This is more or less talking about the church. Amen? This is Jesus now. Jesus, when you read your Bible and it's in red, that's Jesus speaking and talking. Amen? That's the master. He knows what's up. He knows what's what. We don't, but he does. Amen. And if you go down here, Luke 14, starting in, verse 17. And he sent his servant a supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And in verse 18, And they all with one consent began to make excuses. Just like people today, I pastored every excuse in the book. Amen. Maybe two books. Maybe three books. Some of them. Amen. Amen. One said, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs to go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke, and, yoke of oxen, and I need to go prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Amen. That's just excuses. Jesus said, these are excuses. Jesus, the master, right here saying these are excuses. <laughs> you can't change the word of God. <laughs> Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word is forever. It will never pass away. Amen. Amen. These are eternal truths. <laughs> you can't change the truth. Amen. You can't change the word of God. Many people try, but the truth will always prevail. 
The word will always prevail. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring him in hither, the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done, as thou hast commanded, yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the byways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Yes. That my house may be filled. Go to the house of God today. A lot of them are almost empty. He said, go out and get them to come in. I go out and get try to get people in all the time. They make every excuse under the sun. God's heard it all. Come on. Every excuse they can that they don't go to church. Well, I'm sick. Well, I'm this. Well, that's why all the more reason you need to go to church. Well, I don't have the money. Well, that's the more, all the more reason you need to go to church and get your finances prayed for. To get your health prayed for. Get your family prayed for. Come on, we need to get back on track. Half of y'all backslidden. Thank God that he anoints me to preach this. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, I'm not pastoring right now, so I, I don't have no people to lose. But I hope you're listening. Because I'm not here to hurt you. You hurt yourself. You hurt the church. When you miss, you hurt your family. And I'm going to show you how and why. Amen. Hallelujah. The times change, but people don't change mm -hmm. unless God changes them. Hallelujah. In the book of Hebrews, Paul was addressing people about not attending church. I just told you that. And he told the reason why. We need to exhort one another so much more. You see, here he's saying there's more reasons why we should come together. We need each other in the body of Christ. Too many people want to stay home and they want to watch TV. They want to watch a Christianity TV, TVN or something else. They want to watch Christian TV or they want to watch TV evangelists. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Mostly TV evangelists. And they say, that's okay if I do that. It's okay if I just stay home and watch. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're just making excuses and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you who you hurt. I'm going to show you who you hurt here. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank God that he boldly anoints us to preach the truth and we're not afraid to face a man. Thank you, Lord. I pray more ministers will stand up and have a backbone and preach the truth of God and not fear the people. You ministers out there, don't fear the people. If they're not your sheep, God will move them on and bring you right sheep who stand with you. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. These people say it's okay and they justify themselves. I'm going to tell you something. In, in Exodus chapter 25, God started the tabernacle or the tent in the wilderness. God gave Moses the pattern instructions for it. And when he did, everyone was either working for and in the tabernacle or they was tending service. Can I hear an amen? amen? There was work to be done, always work to be done in the tabernacle. Everybody had to make the different things for the tabernacle. Everybody had a part and a role to play in the tabernacle. Some made the curtains, some made this, some made that. When they took the tent down and moved, they, they had to have the people to do it. The Levites were given to take care of what was in the temple. And every person had a work to do. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Nowadays, it's not changed. Amen. Over in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus looked at every one of the churches. You read your Bible. Revelation chapter 2 and 3, it starts out with, I know your works. I know your works. He knows if you're working and you're in church. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. He was looking at every one of them churches, see if they was there and see if they was working. Amen. Amen. The Bible says we are all the body of Christ. When you miss service and when you miss the body, you, you may go to church and you may be anointed to pray for people for healing. If a person came to church that day and they were sick and you wasn't there, then they might get gypped out of that, that healing. Can I hear an amen? You may be amen. the one that should have prayed for them because you was gifted. You see, in the body of Christ, we all gifted and anointed to do different jobs and to do different tasks and do different things. I want to talk about paying tithes, too. You know, in the wilderness, uh, uh, they had to pay tithes, too. They had to bring redemption money into the tabernacle. They had so much money that Moses had to turn them away. God said, you don't need no more. I wish it was like that in the churches today where we could do our work. Can I hear an amen? amen. 
Look, when you miss church, you hurt everybody else. You hurt yourself. You may need prayer. Your children may be in turmoil. Your children may be on drugs. Your marriage may be, uh, there may be division in your, in your marriage. The Bible says in James, uh, hallelujah, James chapter 5, 14 through 17, it says, pray ye one for another. Call for the elders of the church. See, they was talking about the church people praying for people. You see, you really miss out. You miss out on, and you need to, if you don't go to church, you need to pay your tithes. Because God said when you do, he open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing you couldn't even contain. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Oh my God, I wish I had more time to preach this message, but I don't. I'm about running out of time. But I'm here to tell you today, when you when you miss church, it hurts. It hurts not only you, it hurts everybody else. Look, you're the family of God. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't send your tithes to them TV evangelists. Don't watch them on TV and miss church and then send them your tithes. That's not tithes. That's offerings. Tithes go to your local church where you're sped, fed spiritually. When you're sped, fed spiritually, that pastor, if you're sick or something, he'll usually come visit you in your home or go to the hospital and visit you. Try to get hold of that TV evangelist. See if he'll come from California or, or, or somewhere else and pray for you. Amen. It's okay to send them offerings if God tells you to, but usually they're going to preach a feel-good message or they're going to preach a message with no conviction, amen, because they want your money because it costs a lot of money to stay on TV, amen. I mean, I'm not knocking ministers. There's some good ones, but it costs a lot to be on TV and stay on. Can I hear an amen? amen. I, I want to be the bishop of your soul, not your pocketbook. I, I'm running out of time. If you don't know Jesus today, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I ask you to come and wash my sins away today. Wash me clean. You said if, if I confess in my mouth and believe in my heart that you died for my sins, was resurrected on the third day, that I would be saved. If you said that prayer, say it right now. Jesus, wash me of my sins. Forgive me. Cleanse me of my sins. Come, and, come into my heart and live. Be my Lord and Savior of my life. If you said that, get in church and serve him. If you backslid, get back in church. Help the church. Help God's kingdom out. Amen. God bless every one of you. We love you. I just wish I had more time to stay on this, but get back in there and work for God's church again. Amen? Work for the kingdom of God. Do something constructive. Can I hear an amen? We'll see you next program. We love you. God bless you. Amen.